But we will work through, as a, a start, we will work today through, um, uh, let's do number, do you want to do the first or the second transmission line problem from homework number three? The first one? Second. The second one. How many say the first? Raise your hand. Never mind. How many say the second one? It looks like the first one is what people want, right? Okay. We'll do that one. We'll do that one. We can do it. First. First one. Good, good. We had a video vote there, too. Good participation. I like it. Okay, let's go, go to it. I'll go ahead and write the, the circuit topology up here on the board, and then I'll put a list of our states, and then we'll work through step by step. And we'll fill out that nice box. So let's see, we have a 24 volt source, a Z naught impedance on that source, and switch A, which starts out open. There's a voltage V naught that we're interested in at the front of the line. That's the total load voltage there for the beginning of the line. Let's see, we're going to have a Z naught transmission line. There's going to be a forward propagating wave and a backwards propagating wave. And the forward one will be measured, I don't know if it says it explicitly in the problem. Um, yeah, yeah, notice that V plus is measured at the front of the line and V minus is measured at the back of the line. So just keep in mind that these are, even though it's a V plus and a V minus, they're taken at two different points of reference. Because in these transient problems, they can be different at the front of the line versus the back of the line. Then this thing is connected to an open circuited transmission line. I'm running out of space, but I can draw like this. There's nothing on the end that I need to draw. It has V naught. The only thing I do need to draw on the end is that I am interested in Vx, the voltage at the end of the line. And there's a switch B, which will trip at some point. A simple Z naught resistance, V sub B a voltage measured across that resistor. It's not a transmission line, this is just a uh, resistance in the network. And a similar Z naught transmission line, but this one is short circuited. And we are interested in the total voltage here, V sub A, and V sub Y. voltage are taken across the terminals of that last transmission line that we drew. And here are the different switching states. State zero, the switches are open, everything is discharged. So we're starting everything from a dead state. And the nice thing about these sequencer problems is that we're going to go through these different states, and if you can track what's going on, you've mastered everything you need to know about time domain transmission lines. Transients, steady state, fan outs, forwards, backwards propagating waves. Oh, what a beautiful problem. You'll be doing these in your sleep in about a week. State one. Immediately after... A is closed. And immediately in electromagnetics, of course, means picoseconds or femtoseconds, less than a transit time for the transmission line. State two, switch A is closed for a while. And in these nice linear DC systems, for a while means that the uh, uh, transmission lines have all reached a steady state. So uh, there's no chaotic cra craziness going on like we talked about last class period. No oscillations or chaotic random behavior. Everything reaches a nice steady state after a while. State three, 
This is immediately after B closes. State four, switch B closed for a while. State five, immediately after, Switch A opens, and state six was switch A open for a while. So let's make our table to see exactly what this problem is asking for us, and then we'll have all that we need to know for analysis. So we got seven states, starting with state zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. And what are the physical quantities that I'm interested in on this particular transmission line? V naught, voltage at the front of the line, V plus and V minus, the forward and propag propagate, uh, backward propagating line, voltages on that line, V A and V B, and total voltages V X and V Y. Let's go ahead and make a nice chart in your notes. And of course, in this problem, I don't mind giving away some free points. But there is a limit to even my charity. I went ahead and gave you the dead states. State zero and state six. Obviously, if the circuit is disconnected from the source for a while, we're going to have zeros everywhere. OK, so let's see. How do we tackle this? Immediately after switch A closes, let's go back to this diagram and look what happens. We have a dead line. Our first transmission line is going to be uh, a Z-naught resistance here and a Z-naught resistance over in its other terminal. There aren't any sources yet because we haven't launched any waves. In fact, we can take a look at this diagram and recognize the only two things that are going to change from state 0 to state 1 are going to be V-naught and my V-plus as measured at the front of the line. Everything's going to take at least a transit time, T to get down here and affect these voltages. So immediately after A closes, I can just transcribe everything from the first row that isn't V naught and V plus into my second row, which is zeros all across the board. Now, let's go over to this segment. And I apologize for the camera operator ahead of time for all this jumping around <laughs> I'm doing. It's just a big table. It's hard to fit it all on the board. State 1, the equivalent circuit that I use, is 24 volts, Z naught, and I'm going to replace my transmission line with my dead line model. A Z naught impedance on one side, a Z naught impedance on the other side, and honestly I don't care what's going on over there because it doesn't really affect anything. I always like to draw the dotted line to show exactly what I'm substituting in place of my transmission line, exactly where the nodes end and begin. That's one of the most common errors that students make. They lose track of what, they've, what their equivalent circuit is doing, and they think this was part of the transmission line. So they might have one Z naught there, or they might start connecting things uh, crazily. This is, Draw a box where your transmission line used to be and put the exact transient that I give you in your notes or in the back of the test, and you won't make any mistakes. So let's see what we got here. We got voltage divider. Z naught in series with Z naught, that means that 12 volts 
is going to appear across that resistor. 50% of the series resistance is there, 50% of the voltage is going to be there as well. That's going to be my V0 as measured at the front of the line. And what's more, because there isn't a backwards propagating waveform, my, t my V plus must also be 12 volts. V plus and V minus uh, together as measured at the front of the line must be equal to my total input voltage. Since there isn't a V minus, V plus must be 12. Let's go ahead and put down 12 for each of these. 12 volts. 12 volts. You don't have to label the units in this table. It's maybe one of the, because it just gets kind of tedious, it's maybe one of the few times in this class where I will not take off points for not putting labels. They're all voltages, at, at, at least for this particular problem. There's no reason why I couldn't ask for current or reflection coefficients or equivalent impedances. I don't know. But in this problem, it's all voltages, so we won't, we'll leave off the volts. Okay. Anybody questions about state one? Yes? Can you explain again why V plus is 12 volts? No. Can somebody else explain why V plus is 12 volts? Yes. There's no backward propagating wave. If it's less than one transit time. Yes. Does it propagate all the way through? That's right. It's, there's no V minus. There is only a V plus. V plus plus V minus is equal to V naught. Therefore, V plus plus zero is V is twelve. How oh, is so it going to be equal to V naught, not the twenty-four volts? That's right. That's oh. right. Yeah, it's a case where if you if you accidentally move in your head the place where you're measuring the voltage to the source across that resistor. You know, it'll suddenly seem like, oh, it's supposed to be 24 volts. That's why drawing that box with the dotted line is so important. Because you know, oh yeah, V0 is measured at the front of that box, not on the other side of the resistor. Okay, state two. Switch A has been closed for a while. Of course, for a while means that, of course, everything has a chance to charge up. This first transmission line is going to look like short-circuited terminals. And the real interesting thing happens when we get over to the end here because we have an open circuit switch. And the fact that that's over here might cause some people some problems. This might be kind of disturbing. This problem would be much more straightforward and yet entirely identical in its analysis. If I had put switch B here, Is that the same problem? Yes, it is. Of course it is. We have an open circuit in series with a transmission line and a resistor and a transmission line. No current, until that switch closes, no current will ever be able to flow in this circuit or, and, and energize transmission lines. Now when I move it over to here, no different. It's a transmission line in series with an open circuit in series with a resistor and another transmission line. No, cert no current will ever be able to flow in this until I close that switch. And so those two other lines will not energize. They will not energize. Now that's not this true about this transmission line, and that's in a very important point. And the reason is the source is connected to this transmission line. Voltage and current can flow into and out of the line on this side. So that one is going to charge up, but it's still going to see an open circuit after a while. So let's go ahead and draw the diagram that we would use for state two. Dr. Gargan? Oh, yes. This is Bill in Savannah. Uh-huh. I've got a question as to, I understand no current will flow in that portion of the circuit. That's right. But as your, as your bottom branch, it has an extra Z naught, but it's sort of like in series. If you extend that part that's extending down, you would straighten it out and you would have a different, you would have like a Z naught in series section. So over here, are you talking about this transmission line? Yes. Okay. So we have a transmission line in series with a resistor, in series with a transmission line, in series with an open circuit. Nothing is ever going to flow through those devices as long as that open circuit is there. So it doesn't matter whether it's the bottom branch with a short circuit or the top branch with an open circuit or just a resistor. 
No current will ever be allowed to flow in this series circuit until after the switch is done. Does that make sense? It does, yes. I did not think of it like that. Oh, that's okay. These circuits are very weird, so it takes some getting used to. So state two is going to be 24 volts in series with Zenot resistor, a transmission line whose equivalent circuit is a charged up pair of short circuits ending in an open circuit. Because remember, that, open, that circuit is still open, so nothing is ever going to flow in that circuit on the other side of the transmission line. I get just this. Now, we know that the reflection coefficient for an open circuit is plus one. This is trivial to analyze in terms of circuit analysis. An open circuit in series with a 24 volt so source, regardless of what that resistance is, is going to be 24 volt. And we have it at the bottom end of the line. We're also going to have that at the front of the line. And because the reflection coefficient is positive one, my V plus in the steady state is going to be equal to 12 volts. And it's going to be going that way. And my V minus is going to be equal to 12 volts. And that's going to be going that way. The sum of both are going to equal to 24 volts on either side. Everything else to the right of the circuit is not energized. And so we can transcribe zeros into them too. We don't have any voltage on Vx. We don't have any voltage on Vy. No VB yet. Those are all in series with the open circuit. The only thing we have now is a 24 volt input voltage, a 24 volt output transmission line voltage, and we said V plus and V minus were both 12. Any questions about how we got that? Yes, Anya. So why doesn't Vx get anything at all? Why doesn't Vx get anything at all? Because no current can flow through this circuit. It's in series with an open circuit. So that means there's not going to be any voltage here or current flowing into and out of the device. So we can't send voltages and currents down that line yet. It will never charge up. Hmm? It's, like it's like two lines, but they're not even connected. Are they? Well, if you think about what the equivalent circuit model for this deadline is, before this switch throws, it's just a, a resistor. And in order to charge up that transmission line, I've got to have a voltage and a current across that resistor to launch a forward propagating wave. And it's going to reflect and you know, do all this stuff. And in a steady state, it'll charge itself up. But it can't do that you could, uh, until, until that switch is closed. So you can think of it this way. What if I just replaced it with a capacitor or an inductor? Well, until I get voltage and current through that thing, it's going to remain just sort of a dead element, just looking back at you. No voltage and no current until that switch closes. And what's the difference between the VX and the Y? Because VY has those two lines connected and VX is not. Yeah, that's right. VY is taken at the input of a fan out, whereas VX is taken at the output of a fan out. It doesn't really matter because they're both going to be zero for this state. No currents flowing through here, so clearly none of it's ever going to get None of the voltage and current is ever going to make it to the opposite ends of the lines as well. Any other questions? Yes? Everything after Vx is a short circuit after it? Uh huh. Would Vx equal 24? No. No? No, if, if we put a short circuit here? No, no, everything after Vx, like, you know. Oh, oh, if we put a short circuit here? Yeah, all the way down to the first transmission line. Like, like this? Would Vx be 24? Yes, that's right. We'd bypass the open, and this would be a circuit that voltage and current could flow in and energize that. In fact, I think we worked a problem like that with the uh, last class period where there was a capacitor there, which allows, that would allow a connection through the circuit. Sneaky, huh? So you're trying, you're trying yes. to say that, like, that open... Transmission line, it's basically a capacitor. 
Well, it's it's a like a reactive element. Remember, transmission line is an intertwined series of capacitors and inductors. So, I think if if you're having trouble seeing why this thing doesn't energize, just imagine a capacitor there or an inductor. Okay. So, neither of those elements would would charge up in the presence of an open circuit. A slightly more d complicated device like a transmission line wouldn't charge up as well. Yes. So, if you were to measure the voltage between the positive terminal of the X and ground, it would be 24, but since you're measuring it against just like a floating wire, then it's zero? Well, let's see. It depends. We haven't defined what ground should be, but if we use our usual conventions, you're right. There's no voltage drop from here to here. So if I measured from either here or here, um, I don't Hmm. That might even be indeterminate. The point is there's no voltage drop across there. It's, an, it's a dead line. This is a kind of a brain teaser. I, don't th I think this would all be essentially the same node before you got to the open circuit. No voltage drop here or here, though. OK. Let's move on to state three. Oh, this is where it starts to get interesting because you have charged lines and a transient. Immediately after switch B closes, this is still going to be charged. And then let's, just, let's, let's always ask ourselves before we do any analysis, what is not going to change? Well, my change occurs in this part of the circuit. What is immediately affected by that part of the circuit? My V B, my output resist uh, voltage V A of the first line, my backwards propagating measured since it's measured at the beginning of this uh, uh, load transmission line, measured from that point, and my V Y. What will not be affected in this circuit by that cha change immediately afterwards? My Vx, because it's going to take at least a transit time for that change to make it all the way down the line. My V0, because that's also going to be uh, take a, a transit time for any change you make over here to propagate down the line. And finally, my, my V plus, by virtue of the fact that it's measured at the front of the line, that's not going to change either. The V minus is going to change, and one transit time later, that's going to strike the end and it's going to change the V plus. But I don't have to worry about that yet. So you kind of got to get the order straight in your mind. So let's go ahead and transcribe all the stuff that doesn't change as our first step in these problems. This is still going to be 24 volts. For a propagating wave, is still 12 volts. What else did we say was not going to change? Vx is not going to change. All the rest of it still ch changes. So now let me go and write the equivalent circuit model. for state three. For state three, I've got, ooh, charge line. I'm gonna have to use my charge line model. So let me put my first transmission line box. I'm just really gonna concern myself with the load end because that's the part that's changing. And I got this dependent source, which is 2V plus, where the V plus is measured at the end of the line. That has not changed since the previous state, so this total is going to be 24 volts, 2 times 12. I've got a Z naught in series, and I said that that one line has not charged up yet. So I can use my deadline model for that. There's no V plus or V minus on there. So I draw my box. I don't draw the other top half of the circuit because it's kind of boring. It's not really doing anything. I guess I could. Open circuited resistor hanging off in space, not even connected to a source. And let's see, this is connected. B is switched down. Now at this moment, and I got a Z naught there. 
And let's see, I, again, I have an uncharged transmission line. I got a Z naught impedance at the front of the line, no sources, because there's no V plus or V minus on this particular line yet. And I have a really boring Z naught with a short circuit termination. It just kind of dangles out there with no sources, not doing anything interesting. Okay, so I have 24 volts here, and I can do my DC analysis of this circuit really easily with voltage dividers. Look at what I've got, a Z naught, a Z naught, a Z naught, and a Z naught, all in series. That's a total impedance of four Z naught. And let me do voltage divider across here as well. Well, each one has the same value, so I'm going to get six volts across this resistor, this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor. They're all the same value. So when I apply my voltage divider, I get six volts across everything. So let me just write that in really quick. I'll get to your question in a second. Put my pluses on the wrong side. Look at that. Did I get them all on the right side? Yep. Got to go from up and then drops all the way around. Lamb, did you have a question? Um, I probably should know this, but why? could you speak up a little bit? I said I probably should know this, but why are we in a dependent, dependent voltage situation? Oh, well, this is our equivalent model. I draw it as a dependent source because it, what it depends on is the physical V plus striking that line, which we said doesn't change from the previous step. It's still 12 volts. So 2V plus is 24 volts. That's the equivalent circuit model we use for a charged line. Yeah, Laura. Right here, I thought we said that Vx was zero. How come now I have six volts? Well, let's see. That's not Vx. That's the front of the line. Vx is actually written on this up here. Oh. It's at the end of the line. I ran out of space. I should draw my, my dots here. Yeah. It's a classic case where if I had drawn the nice dotted box all the way around and had a little more space, there would have been any confusion. It's on the other side of the line. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do that now so that we actually have, uh, so we can fill out our table. Let's see, we said VA is here, VB is here, VX is up there, but it's not going to matter, and this right here is VY. So VY is 6 volts, VB is 6 volts, VA is 18 volts, right? Got a 6 and a 6 and a 6 to get from that node to that node. So yeah, 18, 6, and 6. The only other piece of information we need is our new V minus. Well, what does that equal? Well, we know that V plus is equal to 12 volts. And if I knew the reflection coefficient at my new junction, I could calculate V minus really easily. I just multiplied by V plus. What is the reflection coefficient? Well, it went from open and it changed to something else. What is that something else? Well, the load, here's another case where I look at the dotted line. The load, which is everything to the right of the line, is Z naught in series with Z naught in series with Z naught. Three Z naught. My load side reflection coefficient, therefore, is three Z naught minus the intrinsic impedance of the line divided by 3z0 plus the intrinsic impedance of the line. Two-fourths, or one-half. Positive one-half. Positive is very important. So if my incident voltage is 12 volts and my reflection coefficient is one-half, I should get six volts on the reflected wave. Yeah? But then I thought that V plus plus V minus, equal your V naught, right? That's right. So 6 plus 12, this is 24. 18. Oh. You're on the wrong side of the line. Oh, okay. okay. 
this guy hasn't made it down to the end. He will eventually. And then there'll be some reflections that shake out and what you said is true. Yeah? To get the uh, low reflection coefficient, you did just the three circuits without the VA? Well, no, VA is on the load side, just like my diagram over there. And what is my load impedance? It's Z naught in series with Z naught in series with Z naught. Three Z naught. So let's go ahead and fill in our table. This we said was six. This is 18. This is six, right? Yeah, and this is six. Ah, getting close. We only have two states left. The state four is always easy because everything's connected. All my switches are closed. Voltages are free to go into and out of all those transmission lines. And in the steady state, after a while, all the transmission lines look like short circuits. Yes? So if EX is open for state three, how is there current? Moving through ah, very sneaky, right? It's just like as if there was a source connected through here. You'll get a voltage propagating up and a V minus propagating backwards. If that open was in series with the input, you couldn't do that. But if it's at the end, that's no problem. That's just like a load. It's just like having any resistor connected to that transmission line. It just happens to be an infinite resistor. Very weird, you know, very uh, not convent, not not your 2040 circuits anymore. A little bit more complicated to track, but doesn't violate anything because voltage and current can flow into and out of this terminal here. So let's go ahead and write our equivalent circuit. I'm going to do a good job this time and leave all enough room to draw boxes for all my transmission lines. So I can know where all the physical quantities are measured from. It's my top line, my bottom line, my feed line over here, my source, 24 volts. Short circuit. Short circuit. Open. Open. Switch is closed. Short circuit. So that's my, my circuit that I'm, I'm analyzing. Let's track the voltages. This is actually a very easy circuit. See, once, once you get the topology down, the problem practice practically solves itself. I got a bunch of short circuits. And I got an open circuit up here. So what's the voltage going to be there? 24. Yeah, 24 volts. Doesn't really matter how big these resistors are unless they're infinite. I'm going to get all my voltage off across the open circuit. What's the reflection coefficient here as seen by this transmission line? All right, in the steady state, we're back to open circuit plus one reflection coefficient. And a total voltage of 24 volts. All of it's here. This is all the same node. And this is all the same potential. If I got 24 volts there, plus one reflection coefficient, that means in the steady state I got V plus is equal to 12 volts, and I'm back to V minus equal to 12 volts here. How did I get from state 3 to state 4? Well, there was a whole bunch of reflections. Reflections went into and out of all these lines. They could be different lengths, so the transit times might have been different. And if you actually were to look in the picosecond scale of this transmission line, all this behavior would have shaken out. You would have seen all these crazy reflections bumping up, bumping down, bumping up, transiting. But at the, in the end, this is the state that it reaches. Because everything's got to be in equilibrium and jive with your 2040 circuit analysis. Okay, so let's go. Everybody understand this? Yeah. How does um, VA 24 volts when there's a resistor on the other side? So, is it got two resistors that, like, some states 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's use some Ohm's law. This is an open circuit. Everything's in series with an open circuit, so I can't get any current flowing through this, can I? Yeah, so there's no current. All my resistors have zero voltage drop on them. That's the trick. If they use a voltage divider equation, but treat this as an infinite resistor. And all of these, you can, you'll be able to see from that equation, just go to zero volts. That's right. If I had put a different resistor value, value there, all bets are off, and it would have shaken out to a different equilibrium state. So I got 24 volts there, got 24 volts there. Let's see, let me label these as well. Let's see, this short circuit, so I got zero volts. Uh, I got zero volts here for the argument that the general, uh, gentleman just made. Uh, let's see, 24 volts at the end of the line. I think I have enough now to fill out all of my table. So let's see, front of the line is 24, end of the line is, is 24. 12 volts going to and from the end of that first line. We said VB was 0 volts, VY was also 0 volts, and all of our 24 volts is at the end of that top line. Ah, one last state. And in fact, this one isn't too bad. It's a charge state that you're, you're making a change to a charge transmission line. But luckily, it's over here. Switch A, let's see. Oh, switch 5. Uh, immediately after switch A open. So it's been closed. It's charged up that entire circuit, and then you rip it open. We go straight back to state one, and we ask ourselves, what could possibly change? V naught, V plus, since it's measured at the front of the line. That's it. So let's go and cheat by putting everything in the previous column into the next, uh, or in the previous row, to the next row because none of that is going to change. The only thing I need to calculate are these two values. So let's go ahead and do that. Why do you suspect they don't change? No, 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 no. Think, think, think. Why wouldn't they change? If I change switch A, why would they not change? Why would only V naught and V plus take immediately after? Yeah, they're still charged. Still charged so they... That's right. It's going to take at least a transit time for any of, any of that stuff I made over there to get down to the end of the line. Okay. So my equivalent circuit in this case, remember it's a charged circuit, so I've got to use something like this. Z naught, and then I suddenly open circuited, and here's the my first transmission line. I got a Z naught and a dependent source, which is twice whatever voltage is immediately striking that terminal at the front of the line. Well, we said from our previous state that V minus is going to be 12 volts, and it remains 12 volts, particularly as you measure it at that end of the line. So this is 24 volts. So when that circuit opens, I go to 24 volts V naught. So let's put that in the... that state. And the only thing I need to calculate now is my new V plus. And in fact it doesn't really change that much because when I disconnect that state my V plus will now be 
plus one reflection coefficient times whatever V minus was striking the line, it will be 12 volts. So interestingly, immediately after I flip the switch, I don't get an immediate change. Now, in a realistic circuit, this is not going to stay in equilibrium for long. A little bit of losses are going to cause reflections to shake out of the system, and you'll die down into a transient zero volts across the board. But here's a case where a matched source with a source voltage wound up producing effectively the same V plus as an open circuited terminal without a source. That's why we got the same answer. We made a change, but we still have the same voltage. Yeah, Cameron. Um, say if switch B would have opened um, instead of switch A, would uh, we have been in the same situation where nothing would have changed? Uh, that would have been a different situation if B had, had opened. Um, so clearly V naught and V minus, V plus wouldn't have changed. But anything on that part of the circuit might have, have uh, uh, have changed. In fact, it's kind of hard to say immediately after what would have happened if I had introduced something like that into the problem, because then you'd have an open circuit in series with an open circuit. Yeah. <laughs> you have an open circuit and a 24 volt source there. So it could be that at least for a fraction of a second, nothing would have changed there as well. Yeah, you might be right. But of course, in a realistic transmission line, voltages that propagate back and forth on the line will slowly lose in uh, uh, power unless you have superconductor top and bottom bars. And we would suspect that after a while that topology would change or the voltages would change. Yeah? I see you have like a V plus ring at the bottom. Are you saying like it's a forward propagating wave? This one? Yeah. Actually, it doesn't. I just drew it there because there was space here. Remember, the V pluses and the V minuses are both measured between the top and the bottom bar of the transmission line. And the plus and the minus just didn't denotes which direction does the waveform carry power, which does it travel. They both are measured from the top and the bottom. And when you put a volt multimeter there, you can't actually measure V plus or V minus. You can only measure the sum of them only by looking at all the voltages at a given instant in time and then kind of playing it like a movie. Can you tell which of those are actually the forward and the backwards propagating wave? Yes? Yeah, it was plus one open circuit. Uh, yes, that's right. It's an open circuit. So plus one reflection coefficient. If you want the ultimate challenge, if you want the ultimate challenge, there are lots of practice tests with uh, solutions and answers on there that you can test to see if you're doing them right. I think a couple years ago, I, I just, I don't know what I was thinking, I just got crazy and I put this problem on there called the Death Star. It was six transmission lines in fan out. It became infamous among all electromagnetic students. And so, the, the, if you're feeling good about yourself, if you can defeat the Death Star, if you can blow up the Death Star, you are going to do really well on this first test. So it's on the web if you want to play around with it. It's really not as bad as it looks. It's just called the Death Star because I was feeling a little facetious and I wanted to intimidate my students. No? If you could add anything, how did the values change? Yeah. Like, I know, like, we, um, the V, the uh, yes. Oh, sure, sure. We could have done a lot of things. So, for example, there may be a problem in your book that says, well, what happens if instead of breaking off this way, the switch comes down and connects across a matched resistor? In that case, now the reflection coefficient is going to be zero. V minus is going to be zero. And my total voltage there is going to be 6 volts, or 12 volts, excuse me. And that's, you know, it's very subtle because in both instances you're disconnecting the source. 
but it makes a world of difference if you disconnect it to an open circuit or disconnect it to a match circuit. In fact, a lot of times you'll put circuitry intentionally like this to suppress reflections. It's a great way to terminate uh, a line. You know, instead of disconnecting your source, just connect it to a resistor instead of an open 